He's gonna... Oh, I think I... Guys, my Caleb Morpin book is here, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. A few moments later... We have it! We have it! Anyway, I'm gonna open this. You guys ready? You guys ready for the moment? This is the moment. This is the moment. It arrived in four f***ing days! Look at that beautiful man. Man, are you guys excited? Caleb Morpin book just dropped! Caleb Morpin book just fucking dropped, folks. Mm. Just got coronavirus from kissing the Caleb Morpin book. Caleb Morpin, bread tube serves imperialism. Are you guys ready? Bread tube serves imperialism. Who published this? There's no publisher. Oh, Center for Political Innovation. That's his own. So the Center for Political ah, Innovation I'm is consuming. his own fucking people. Thanks for the 100 bits. It's cost me 50 fucking dollars to ship, by the way. Okay, we have a list. We have a list. Who, who and what is bread to? Natalie Contrapoints win. Um, Harris Bomber Guy Brewis. Ian Vorj Kaczynski. Socialism Done Left, who doesn't have a name apparently. Matt Fortslime, written as if Fortslime is his last name. Stephen Destiny Bonnell. Caleb Faraday Speaks Kane. I mean, that's a pretty weird one to put in there. Dr. Steve Hassan. Who is Dr. Steve Hassan? He's a, he's an, he's a writer on mind control. Um, okay. But that's what he has as, as his bread tubers, right? Very weird. He has an entire chapter about um, ContraPoints' video on fascism. Like, there's no way that I can read this on the entire fucking... Like, I, you know, obviously I can't read the entire book on the stream. I'm not going to do that. I just want to get to the funny parts. I, I'm disappointed that I'm not in the video, considering that I'm the one who posted the, the fucking Nazbol thing of him sitting next to Dugan. Who is, who is BreadTube? Okay. Okay, he says, The Wikipedia definition of BreadTube seems to almost confirm the thesis of this book. That BreadTube is an entity that is being utilized by the more powerful, liberal, globalist wing of the Western capitalist power structure to beat back the emerging right-wing opposition. It is worth examining a few of the major players in the BreadTube universe. Okay, so it has like profiles of those, of those people. Uh, profile of ContraPoints. As part of his evidence that ContraPoints is bad, he says that the Southern Poverty Law Center, which equates black nationalists with Nazis, and has pushed the narrative that anti-war leftists are red-brown crypto-fascists, has approvingly cited Natalie Wynn in her reports and praised her efforts. So if the Southern Poverty Law Center likes you, that makes you, that makes you bad, fam. I guess. Blah, blah, blah. She has high, her content is high quality, he says, but she is not particularly loved. She is attacked viciously by her BreadTube community. ContraPoints generally puts forward the view that the US government has been infiltrated by a secret Nazi conspiracy and that the role of leftists is to protect the establishment by rooting out this conspiracy. Excuse me? Can anyone tell me what, what he's... Can anyone please explain? When did that happen? Okay, now we have H. Bomber guy, right? This is going to be a weird one because H. Bomber guy doesn't make videos about this sort of thing, right? It's all about like pop culture and stuff and individual issues that like everyone can sort of agree on, right? So what's he going to say here? Oh, so um, he says that um, H. Bomber guy devotes much of his content to debunking the views of right wingers, not to promoting Marxism. Is that why he's bad? Because he doesn't specifically promote Marxism. He's, he's a, a member of the Labour Party and a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn, okay. That, that alone makes him far more radical than ContraPoints, right? Because Jeremy Corbyn is on the wrong side of, of the whole establishment smear campaign stuff. So why would he be listed here as a bad guy? His videos largely focus on debunking the claims of pickup artists, flat earth conspiracy f conspiracists, and those who allege that soybeans reduce testosterone. Oh, that was a great video. <laughs> he also comments on video games, movies, and other cultural topics. One of Brewis's greatest achievements was fundraising a stream for the British transgender advocacy and charity organization known as Mermaids. On this stream, Brewis was joined by U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Chelsea Manning, as well as a number of Hollywood actors such as Colin Mockery and Mara Wilson. 
Colin Mockery is a Hollywood actor? Colin Mockery is some guy from Whose Line Is It Anyway? But anyway, and is that bad? I don't understand. Is he bad because he... Because he did a charity stream that was an objectively good thing? Or is, is are we just supposed to take that as bad because um because we're supposed to believe what Kayla Morpin does about trans people? Oh, this is Morpin. This is Morpin's Magnum Opus. I've read the first sentence of this. Okay, guys, we're on the Vorsch part. This is the best part of the book. I can already tell you. I skimmed the first sentence with my eyes and it's already good. Ian Vorsch Kaczynski. Well, that's his name, I guess. Um, Vorsch, has, Vorsch is a POC because he's Polish. A video game playing child of wealth from Beverly Hills named Ian Kaczynski has taken on the moniker Vorsch. He has been appointed by YouTube algorithm, algorithms as the unofficial spokesman for Marxist, socialist, and leftist thought. Vorsch's father is Mark Kaczynski, a figure in Hollywood who describes himself on LinkedIn as director, visual effects artist, and supervisor with 20 years of experience in production. I mean, is he trying to frame some guy who does production stuff for Hollywood as like an elite? I don't think that's really fair. Mark Kaczynski. How does he even find that out? So, Vorsch's dad is a, is a VFX guy, apparently. That means Vorsch's dad is not like, you know, the the fucking um, owner class. He's just the guy who does VFX work. So how does that make Vorsch part of like the elite or whatever? Part of like the Hollywood conspirational elite that he's trying to associate him with. And honestly, how does he even know that this guy is Vorsch's dad? Just because they have the same surname? That's a pretty common surname. Doesn't make any sense. Let's assume that that's true, right? I don't think. I don't think that this is this this is even remotely proven that these people have any relation, but even if it is true, this wouldn't be why Vosh is bad. It would be because he's the, he's the video game playing child, which Morpin very accurately described. In earlier years, Vosh used the moniker Irish Laddie. He appeared on the streams of internet video game enthusiast Stephen Destiny Vonnell. I gotta say, I approve of Caleb's characterization here of these people. Based. In favor of his interpretation of anarcho-communism. He eventually set up his own Twitch and YouTube channel on which to play video games and, and urge listeners to vote for Joe Biden. Caleb, you are based. This, wow, the Vorsch section is like four pages long. The others were like a page only, or not even a page. H Mama Guys was half a page. On streams, Ian often claims that there is a secret Nazi conspiracy that has infiltrated the US government. No, he doesn't. What the fuck are you talking about? Excuse me? He said the same thing about ContraPoints too. Apparently, BreadTube thinks there's a secret Nazi conspiracy to infiltrate the US government. Man, what's going on? Um, in the aftermath of the January 6th Capitol riot, Vorsch appeared to call for a mass totalitarian style disappearing of Trump supporters, tweeting out, democracies cannot coexist with these people. They disappear or we all do. Based. Like, two whole pages talking about how Vorsch is a pedophile here. The personality of the 25-year-old indicates signs of narcissism and sex addiction. Dude, this is an entire book about people who doesn't like. Honestly. I didn't make that up. Right fucking there. Like, he, he, it's so fucking obvious that this book was written because he doesn't like, because he, he had, he lost some, or he's pissed off about some Twitter arguments. Kaczynski has lied excessively about this author, claiming he is a literal Nazi and that he supports US billionaire capitalists like Jeff Bezos. Statements he clearly knows to be false. He also baited this author for, for allegedly being anti-American. I don't know what the fuck that means. Caleb Morpin literally is like a guy who says, we, we need to... We need a new American. He wants like socialism with American characteristics. In many streams, it seems apparent that Vorsch has handlers or advisors who are more familiar with Marxism than he is. I'm not making that up. He, he literally said Vorsch has handlers and advisors. Right fucking there. You see it? He thinks that Vorsch is like a shady CIA op. No, dude, he's just some fucking dumbass liberal. Most people are dumbass liberals, man. Occam's razor. Think about it. Often Vorsch will be seen stuttering his way through explaining concept that he does not clearly understand, clearly quoting someone else, most likely an individual who learned the concept in an academic and not activist setting. Ah, he's, he's talking about the video, the famous Vorsch video. 
an entire page dedicated to the, to vi the video about Vosh using Marxism to justify um to justify voting for Joe Biden. No, no, no. This is even worse. He's saying in regards to that video, it became clear to many viewers that the list of quotes had been prepared by someone else and that Vorsch knows very little about Russian or Chinese history. No. The, the list of quotes was clearly prepared by him. That's why it was so fundamentally terrible. Because specifically, because he's the, clearly the one who made it himself. That's why. He says, none of this has stopped this smug video game player from occupying the position of being the primary Marxist voice on the internet. In no way, shape or form is Walsh the primary Marxist voice on the internet, or even a Marxist voice at all. No one thinks that he's a Marxist voice, not even himself. What are you talking about, man? Like, obviously Walsh is a fucking moron, but this guy, he said here, According to Walsh, if US media says that Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction, or that the evil Spaniards have sunk the USS Maine, you must believe it. If you do not, you are the same as a neo-Nazi and deserve to be beaten up by Antifa, if not disappeared in order to protect the great American democracy. This is like an absolutely insane ramble. Guess what's next? I honestly cannot believe that he has an entire section here about someone who doesn't even make videos. Socialism Done Left is a stream with like 2,000 followers. He gets less viewers than me. And he has an entire section in Morpin's book. I'm honestly jealous. I'm offended. Why does Socialism Done Left have an entire section? It's, this makes it clear as possible that it's a book about people who Morpin had interactions with on Twitter that annoyed him. An individual using the name Socialism Done Left on Twitter and YouTube grabbed some widespread attention when it was revealed that they may not actually be a leftist at all. Okay. And why is, this, why is there a whole section on this in your book? He just quotes like the Vox article on Socialism Done Left being revealed as a racist. He says, the revelations about them grabbed attention due to the widespread suspicious, suspicions about various bread tube voices, their origins, and their sincerity. I mean, there's not really much suspicion, they're just liberals, dude. The claim that such statements were intended as jokes doesn't seem to hold up when examining their context. Yeah, and... It is worth noting that socialism done left echoed the anti-tanky narrative, equating leftists who do not echo US foreign policy rhetoric with the far right. It seems that inciting leftists against China was, the fi was a primary focus of socialism done left context, much of which has been removed in the aftermath of the leaked messages. So I think he's just kind of slyly implying which socialism done left is a fed, which yeah, ba yeah he is. So, true. It can, Matt Fort Slime. Just look at how menacing this is. Look at, look at how menacing. Matt Fort Slime. Matt Fort Slime. Like, someone describing someone as first name, internet, internet, like, um, name is very fucking menacing to me. I'm gonna send a screenshot of that to Fort Slime. A Canadian comedian whose first name is Matt is one of the primary voices on the internet purporting to be an expert on Marxism and anarchism. Fort Slime literally does not do anything like that. I mean, when does Fort... How does Fort Slime purport to be an expert on Marxism and anarchism? This guy is making shit up. Matt identifies as non-binary, meaning they do not identify with either the male or female gender, and prefers to be referred to as they rather than he or she. Weird fucking thing to include a full sentence on, as if you think that's, that's bad. Matt uses the YouTube moniker Fort Slime as their video background features a green snot looking sludge. Okay, remember his remember Caleb Morpin's obsession with Fort Slime being, like, naming himself after Slime and how that makes him anti-proletarian? Matt is essentially a cyber bully who wraps their comedy in pseudo-leftist ideology and 90s goth-style edgelordism. What? Matt seems to have had a very difficult life, something that they frequently remind viewers of. Topics like suicide, depression, child abuse, bullying, and mental health are frequently discussed. It's very weird that he's mentioning all of these things as if, like, he, he thinks that you're supposed to take them as negative by default. According to YouTube Wiki fandom, Matt's- I'm not gonna say these names, but he says that Matt's mother is a convicted white-collar criminal. 
I don't know how that's relevant. Why is there like a, a, two pages on who's on his who his mom is? Are, are they are they are they is does Caleb Morpin think that this guy who who spent like five fucking years working in fast food comes from like a like a a white collar criminal background and he and now he's a CIA agent making videos on a Canon SL2 with a USB microphone? Excuse me. I'm talking about the Caleb Morpin. I have the Caleb book. I don't, I'm not just talking about it. I fucking have it. Okay. Average, average, um, Caleb Morpin fan. I don't know why there's like an entire half a page about his mum. I don't understand. Whatever privilege his mum may have clearly did not transfer to him. Anyway, no record exists of Matt ever being involved with any anarchist or communist organization. Or any activism, and so what? Most people don't don't list off their their activism as if it's something special, like Morpin does. Like you don't list your activism on a fucking resume. Matt's followers tend to target whoever Matt has chosen to unleash their rage on with absurd personal attacks and harassment. So basically, this is just like because Fort Slam laughed at Caleb Morpin a couple of times. Now Fort Slam gets an entire fucking street in in the book dedicated to him. For example. Matt has claimed that the writer's father was a Wall Street banker and that the writer has never criticized the right-wing YouTube channel PragerU. I don't even know if that's true. For all I fucking know, he could be making this up. What? Holy shit! You guys are not going to believe the sentence that I'm about to read to you. You guys are not going to believe this next sentence, okay? Oh, okay. Are you ready? Matt's videos tend to fixate on things like slime, feces, genitalia, and other things deemed to be ugly. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking lying. I'm not making this up. It's here. I'm, what I'm really pissed off about is that I'm not in this. Maybe there's like a section for honorable mentions and I'm in there. Matt's videos tend to focus on things like slime, feces, genitalia, and other things deemed to be ugly. Excuse me? Slime, feces, and genitalia? And other things deemed to be ugly? Excuse me? Our Matt's channel is much like the Netflix show 13 Reasons Why. In that while it appears sympathetic to the mentally ill, it more or less encourages and enables people to fixate on their depressed, rageful, and suicidal feelings, wallowing in self-pity, anger, and hopelessness. I'm um, sorry, can you substantiate? Excuse me? This begs a fair question. How many of Matt's mostly t teenage and largely transgender audience have actually committed suicide after stewing with Matt for hours on their dark feelings? Excuse me? What? How many of Matt's mostly teenage and largely transgender audience have committed suicide after stewing with Matt for hours on their dark feelings? Excuse me? Can anyone explain what in the fuck I am reading? The answer is, of course, unknown. Who knows how many... You know, this guy just, just blamed, apparently, a bunch of um, suicides on, on Fort Slime. Just, like, based off nothing. Can I show that passage? Of course. It's there. Well. This begs a fair question. How many of Matt's mostly teenage and largely transgender audience have actually committed suicide after stewing with Matt for hours on their dark feelings? Matt is kind enough to often provide a trigger warning in front of their more depressed or grotesque screeds. Now we have Stephen Destiny Bonnell. Okay. In 2011, a compulsive video game player from Nebraska quit his job as a carpet cleaner because he had figured out a method of making money entirely from playing the video game StarCraft 2. Okay. He writes this with sort of like a menacing aura, right? Like, it seems like he's, he wants you to think that this is bad. Like, apparently that Destiny was a carpet cleaner is bad. So Destiny live streamed and made money to make an income 
off streaming, blah, blah, blah. Already in Japan, there has been widespread discussion of hikikomori, acute social withdrawal, where technology enables young men to live in, as modern-day hermits. Destiny is very much a celebrated hero among those attracted to such a lifestyle. Okay, I wasn't aware of that, but I guess you learn something new every day. Destiny became a debater for social dem democratic policies. I think that's giving him too much credit. Um, Destiny is not technically considered to be a part of BraidTube. Um, blah, blah, blah. Just like, you know, you, you guys, I don't need to read this to you. You guys know what he's saying. He's like saying Destiny said something about, you know, he, he, Destiny supported people killing um protesters and stuff. That's true. He said, is it, it is a bit of an embarrassment for the bread to community that he functioned as their kingmaker. Um, Ian Vorskachinsky, for example, launched his career by being a frequent guest on Destiny's live streams. Most of BreadTube's big names can be traced back to some connection with Bonnell. I don't think that's true at all. I think, like, maybe one or two streamers. I mean, BreadTube doesn't really describe the streamers. It describes the video makers first and foremost. Ah, Morpin, here is the entire point of the book, okay? You're gonna feel the, like, resentment seething through here. Like, he's just giving the game away. It should be noted that the author of this book's entire introduction to the BreadTube universe came from an invitation to debate Stephen Destiny Bonnell. Bonnell was entirely blown away by this writer's citing of actual data in defense of the existing socialist countries. And the debate resulted in a huge expansion of his social media following. And then everyone clapped. Who writes about themselves like this? Bonnell approached the debate in a very so smug manner, assuming that nowhere had social socialist central planning ever had economic successes. successes. At, amid the debate, at one point, Stephen spotted out the phrase, what does life expectancy prove? Revealing a darker Malthusian undertone in his worldview. I mean, no, not really. It just proves he's a dumbass. This guy sees Malthusianism in fucking everything, doesn't he? Matt Fort Slime. God. I want to read that, that, that one again. Matt's videos tend to fixate on things like slime, feces, genitalia, and other things deemed to be ugly. What a quote. I love to focus on things like slime, feces, genitalia, and other things deemed to be ugly. That's my favorite thing to do. This rules. It's an entire book about how people on the internet don't like him. Caleb Kane. Okay, this one's about Faraday Speaks. Now, Faraday Speaks is a, is a genuinely decent guy who um, hasn't milked. He, he's, he's, he could have easily milked his initial fame to become like a, a bread tube sort of um, video maker guy, but he didn't. So I can respect that. What, what issue does he take with him? Caleb Kane was made temporarily famous by a New York Times article, okay? The article featured on New York- oops. The article featured on New York Times, blah blah blah. The article seems on its surface, you know, it's, it was like an article about him talking about how um, he was like on, like a fascist, and then he had a change of heart like after seeing the Christchurch, Christchurch shootings or whatever. The article on its surface seems to be a telling story of how an impressionable young man can be seduced by extremism and become a young radical. The article opens with an account of him buying his first firearm. However, the actual details of Kane's story are quite disappointing. So, Morpin says, um, the New York Times tried to frame it as if he was becoming a terrorist or something when all that he was doing was like right, watching right-wing stuff online. I mean, I guess that's true, but I don't understand what his point is. So Kane eventually shifted his political views. A new girlfriend who had a more compassionate worldview and his changing life circumstances enabled him to de-radicalize de and unbrainwash himself. Yet, in Caleb's interviews, he speaks as if he's repenting from the heaviest of sins. I mean, does being a white is being a white nationalist not a really heavy sin that one should have to repent from? I think it is, so seems kind of fair. In one interview, he says with deep regret that at one point he considered going to the Charlottesville protests in 2017. I mean, yeah, that sounds like something that one should deeply regret. 
After the advertising on the New York Times article, Kane launched his own YouTube channel. No, that came first. Celebrating his status as a former extremist who had been de-radicalized. However, the extent of Kane's radicalism was nothing more than listening to YouTube videos becoming more distant with his family, and at one point continuing to go to a demonstration, considering going to a demonstration. He's kind of right here in that a lot of this stuff is really overblown, but he's also attacking a guy who didn't milk it. Like, his YouTube channel is basically just there as like an archive for his live streams. He doesn't make videos at all, he doesn't really make much money from it at all. So I don't really understand what he's going for here. Like, if you're targeting... Like, like, this is like the one guy who did the I used to be a fascist thing and he was honest about it. He wasn't just using it as a grift. And he chooses to target him. Yeah, he was considering going to a Nazi rally on the side of the Nazis, even though he didn't go. He was clearly pretty far in there, right? And it's, it's obviously a good thing that he doesn't think like that anymore. He's, 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 a, he's a very honest sort of guy who hasn't milked his fame to make money or anything like that. You know, he has a normal job. He occasionally does a stream on YouTube, like, once a month. Okay? Big fucking deal. He could have easily ridden his original fame to become a YouTuber, but he didn't. What? He says, The nature of BreadTube as a poorly executed de-radicalization effort by the most powerful factions among the imperialists is made quite apparent by Caleb Kane. No, it's fucking not, dude. Excuse me? Do you have any evidence that BreadTube is a poorly executed de-radicalization effort by the most powerful factions among the imperialists? Because some one guy on YouTube claims to have been de-radicalized? Excuse me? Caleb Morpin draws very, very emphatic and, like, conspirational conclusions from absolutely no evidence. It's very interesting. I'm gonna guess that the conclusion of this book is that these people are like CIA agents or some sort of op. I mean, obviously, that's what he's always implied. That's what he's implying here, right? That the most pa they are the pow powerful factions of imperialists. And then he has like a section of, on Steve Hassan, um, which is like talking about cults and stuff. I don't really understand. I guess he's, he's saying that Steve Hassan is like an anti-cult activist. And he's trying to say that um, somehow like cult deprogramming or something is connected to the CIA. Yeah, that's exactly what he's saying, right? He's like going through like how this Steve Hassan guy has apparently received grants from, from US government connected organizations. And somehow there's some sort of connection here between that and BreadTube. Oh, here it is. Hassan has been a mentor to Caleb Kane, and according to an unnamed source, appears to be advising other members of the BreadTube community to de-radicalize Americans on the far right. That's where the link is. That's where the link is. Caleb Kane, uh, Hassan, this guy is apparently a mentor to Caleb Kane, and according to an unnamed source, according to an unnamed source, folks, th this guy is controlling this guy who, according to Caleb Morpin, receives money from the US government, is, is the shady guy controlling BreadTube from behind the scenes. There you go. No, there's no citations. There's no footnotes. There, there's no, there's nothing. An unnamed source. He says that Hassan describes Donald Trump as the leader of a cult and refers to the internet conspiracy theory QAnon as a cult, despite the fact that they are not a cult. Excuse me? Yes, they are. Steve Hassan has been given a platform to declare Trump and QAnon to be a cult and has suggested that mass deprogramming might need to take place. And he just goes on about like, um, apparently Steve Hassan doesn't hate the CIA. I don't even know who he is, so why is that relevant? He seems to have a particular vendetta against the Russian government, claiming that Russian President Vladimir Putin leads a political cult. Okay, and why would I give a shit about this? Like the entire basis of him, including this guy in the book, is, for, is, is so that he can connect him is so that because this guy, according to Caleb Morpin, has some sort of shady links with the US government or whatever, and because Caleb Morpin's unnamed source said that he is advising members of the BreadTube community, that means that BreadTube is an op now. I mean, I, I am going to review the whole book and make a video, but not, not for a while. But right now I'm just reading it because I'm... This is my initial skimming. Are you guys ready for, like, the, the weirdest fucking, um... Jumpy, the weirdest like jump of logic you could possibly imagine. BreadTube appears to be 
some kind of cyber age deprogramming operation aimed at the US right wing, but also targeting legitimate Marxist Leninists and anti imperialists. He literally thinks that BreadTube is a fucking CIA psyop. Of course, right? Like, this is specifically anti anti materialist, and I'll explain it to you guys. I'll explain to you guys why this is anti materialist, okay? The materialist answer to so many liberals showing up at once and making YouTube videos, basically promoting, like, you know, liberal sort of capitalism with a human face sort of thing. The materialist explanation for this is simply that, you know, they hold the, the, they hold the very popular majority beliefs, which in, in the West, these sorts of beliefs are the majority, especially among the young demographic that they can appeal to the most. So, you know, they're like, oh, you know, these other people are making videos appealing to this demographic. I'm going to do that too. I'm going to, you know, make a name for myself, get famous, make some money for myself by appealing to sort of what, what the majority have sort of been led towards believing through the acceptable sort of political discourse in, in my country or my environment. Okay. And so they do it because they, you know, they want to do that themselves. They want the fame, they want the money, it's fun, it interests them, etc, etc. Nothing to fucking do with them being a CIA fucking psyop. That is not a materialist explanation. That is actually a very out there explanation that is much less likely than the most obvious one, which is simply, this is the result of like, you know, what people are sort of led to believe or like, like how people are sort of led to be by the, the dominant ideology in society today like people are like the dominant ideology in the u.s today is not republicanism it's not u.s republicanism at least among 20 to 30 like 18 30 80, 18 to 35 sort of people the dominant ideology among them is essentially neoliberalism with social programs so it shouldn't be fucking surprising to see a bunch of youtube channels crop up that are essentially neoliberals who like social programs okay not surprising at all. But for Caleb Morpin, this is self-evidently a CIA PSYOP. It is possible that it's a CIA PSYOP, okay? That is definitely a possibility. But it seems a very fucking unlikely one, considering you've presented no proof other than an unnamed source who claims that some guy named Steve Hassan is a mentor to bread tubers. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. Counter gangs and the late Cold War. Understanding BreadTube's emergence as a brand of establishment-approved socialism while observing the lingering influence of a deprogrammer named Steve Hassan forces us to discuss the 20th century Cold War and how the Soviet Union and its allies were defeated. For one, no, it doesn't. No. Literally nothing. That doesn't follow at all. What the fuck are you talking about? What? No, BreadTube is, bread is not nothing like the fall of the Soviet Union. I refuse to, I refuse to even remotely accept your premise here. Like, unbelievable. He says, he, he says here that the Soviet Union fell as, as a result of maneuvering from American intelligence. Excuse me, dude. Obviously, American intelligence was involved, but saying that, like, it fell specifically because of American intelligence is, um, a very weird stance to take. He's talking about, like, U.S. military interventions during the Cold War. Um, you know, suppression of the civil rights movement. What does it have? This has nothing to do with fucking bread tube. He's talking about how like um, the U.S. changed strategy after the Vietnam War to use more soft power, use more manipulation, um, like among left movements and stuff, which is true. But what does it have to do with bread tube? He's trying to like form some sort of weird link between this, between like factionalism among the left at near the end of the Cold War to bread tube. It has later been revealed that Pol Pot. The crazed ultra leftists who rejected basic principles of Marxism and Leninism and slaughtered hundreds of thousands of Cambodian and Vietnamese communists was in fact a covert puppet of the United States. Pol Pot had been educated in France and the US government was providing him with guns and weapons in his fight against the pro-Soviet communists in his homeland and against Vietnam. Okay, no, that came afterwards. Yes, Pol Pot was educated in France. That was because Cambodia was a French colony and it was normal for people from Cambodia and from Vietnam to be educated in France. Ho Chi Minh was educated in France, you fucking moron. Okay? That doesn't prove anything. Pol Pot was supported by the USA after he took power. After he'd already done most of his, his genocide, okay? That was when he became convenient. 
beforehand, the USA actually bombed, the others actually um, was bombing Pol Pot, right? They were bombing his side, they were, the, the, the government there that he was fighting against was propped up by the USA. And it was the US bombing that helped turn a lot of people to, to like, sympathize with Pol Pot. Okay. And it was after that, it was after that, that Vietnam and, uh, kind of went into conflict with Cambodia that, um, the USA started supporting Pol Pot. He was not a US puppet the entire time. This is just terrible fucking history. He's comparing Pol Pot to BreadTube. Pol Pot and his allies represented a counter gang. The use of counter gangs became a key staple of US strategic policy in the late Cold War. So, Pol Pot is basically like BreadTube. Then he talks about the Congress of Cultural Freedom, which was mostly an attempt to form like, um, like a, a sort of conservative, um, a, a body that, uh, you know, um, advocated for so-called conservative values. It was very openly conservative. I've talked about it before in my video on the Australian sort of coup. So he's trying to say that Euro-communism was a CIA PSYOP. Caleb Watman is basically just saying here that everything that ever happened is, is that he doesn't like is because of the CIA. Um, and he says, yeah, he says right here, basically, all of this covert manipulation of armed communist groups Socialist countries and leftist intellectuals culminated in the overthrow of the Soviet Union in 1991. He's accrediting the fall of the Soviet Union specifically to CIA psyops, basically, which is um, giving them a lot more credit than they deserve. Okay, there was a lot. There was a lot of other. I think there was a lot of other factors to that than just CIA psyops. So now he's saying, decades later, in conditions when information travels much faster in the age of the internet, BreadTube appears to be yet another counter gang. Like the Khmer Rouge, UNITA, the Congress for Cultural Freedom, or the various counterculture religious cults, it speaks in the name of left-wing sounding ideals. Oh, man, this is too much. In reality, it is most likely serving one section of the, um, of the smokes. Well, it is likely serving one section of the American ruling class and the intelligence agencies. Covert support is most likely being provided in order to enable, enable the algorithm hacking that has allowed BreadTube to flourish as the primary left-wing audience voice online while waging a relentless campaign against others. So, like, Caleb Morpin spends 10, 10 pages saying the CIA did this and this and this, the CIA, the CIA, the CIA, and then he's like, BreadTube is most likely a CIA PSYOP. Evidence? Nothing. But, you know, he's primed you to accept it by talking about all these other things that the CIA did, even though he has absolutely fucking nothing to link them. And then in the next, in the next part, he's trying to say that, um, that, um, you know, e even though these people might not know that they are CIA agents, they're still funded by the CIA. They seem to have appeared out of nowhere to suddenly become representatives of left-wing politics. So that's that's like what he's saying that makes that makes them they're apparently proof as them being CIA agents. Some of them have odd skeletons in their closets. Natalie Wynn's sudden rise to prominence. I mean, she made YouTube videos for like five, five, six years, man. There's nothing sudden, uh, there's not, not really, there's not any sort of um, skeleton in her closet about that. Vorsch's shady history in relation to topics like child pornography and lack of charisma. I don't think having a lack of charisma would be a skeleton in someone's closet. Matt Fort Slime's mother and his fixation on topics like suicide and self-harm. Destiny shifts from libertarian to social democrat, followed by his celebration of right-wing attacks on protesters. Mysterious social media history of socialism done left. Caleb Kane's celebrated status as a ex-right-wing extremist. All of these indicate that BreadTube has powerful allies who are using them to serve a purpose other than communist revolution. I mean, if these people aren't interested in communist revolution is self-evident. 99.999% of people aren't interested in communist revolution, dude. How does that indicate by itself that they have powerful allies who are using them to advocate against communist revolution? Excuse me. Attention Westerners, what is going on here? 
No, none of this indicates any of the conclusions that you're saying. You have no evidence of any of this. What the fuck? Is it really so unbelievable that some random liberals independently decided to make YouTube channels and happened to get big? Attention Westerners. Attention Westerners. It's exactly what happened to me. I made one YouTube video because I felt like it and people seemed to like it. So I started making more and eventually people, you know, I got big enough to where I could do it for a living. Simple fucking shit. You know, I don't know. Maybe I am a secret CIA agent. Maybe Caleb Morpin is correct. <clears throat> the existence. Okay. So now he just continue. He just continues going on as if everything that he said is true. The existence of BreadTube as an entity pushed forward by elements within the deep state to defend the liberal order from right-wing opposition is not really in itself a scandalous revel revelation. It is to be inf expected in times such as these. So again, it's just self-evident. And this is where he gets into the point, right? However, in addition to demonizing the Trump movement and the various online currents aligned, aligned with it, BreadTube has another target. One thing that all these figures agree on is that China, Russia, and to some extent Iran, Venezuela, Cuba, Vietnam, and Nicaragua are somehow toxic totalitarian societies, and it is the duty of Western leftists to destabilize and undermine these countries. I don't think that these people remotely want think that Western leftists should undermine and destabilize these countries. I think that what you're doing, Caleb Morpin, here is um is mistaking your meaningless internet online Twitter arguments that change nothing at all and that influence nothing at all because what really matters is the discourse in the mainstream media which is far to the right of all of these people as um as having some sort of influence on something like it doesn't fuck like it doesn't fucking matter if Vosh's fans think that China is bad that changes nothing in the world dude honestly you need you need some help what is this let's continue Vosch has been the most explicit in equating pro-Chinese communists with Nazis while celebrating the Hong Kong protests to unfurl Pepe the Frog signs and Trump banners. But these sentiments are more or less prevalent throughout the entire bread tube sphere. So if you, um, if you don't explicitly outright support China, that means that you, um, you are a CIA agent funded by the deep state. The narrative that somehow Trump supporters and QAnon are an extension of the illiberalism of the anti-imperialist bloc is also implied in much of BreadTube's material. In what material? Dude, most, like, out of the people who he listed, the only ones who talk about China are, um, Borsch and Socialism Done Left. And Socialism Done Left is effectively just a Twitter account. Not even, like, a real video maker or anything. And they only do it very occasionally, like, when has ContraPoints... Or H Bomber guy ever talked about fucking China or Russia? The main problem with BreadTube is that it is blatantly miseducating people and misrep misrepresenting key concepts of Marxism, socialism, communism. I mean, it does do that, but the main problem with BreadTube is that everyone involved thinks it's way more important than it actually is. And Kelly Morpin is definitely one of these people. He's mistaking his his personal Twitter beefs as being um, some sort of like global you know, world-changing conspiracy. BreadTube emboldens the most powerful capitalists in their efforts to maintain power. Dude, dude, the most powerful capitalists don't fucking give a shit about you or me or Vosh making videos on YouTube or talking about shit on Twitter, dude. They literally don't care. The most, some of the most powerful capitalists are in China right now and they're living it up. So they, they embolden the most powerful capitalists in their efforts to maintain power, beat back anti-imperialist states and suppress unrest and rebellion at home. So then he says, deconstructing the various misrepresentations and delusions prepared but presented by BreadTube in order to achieve this goal will be the purposes of the remaining pages of this book. So I, I feel like he feels like he's already proven his idea that BreadTube is funded by the CIA and that it's a deep state psyops truce. So now he just has to go on to other stuff. So um, hold on, I need to piss again. And then I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm, I want to like see if he talks more about the psyop stuff. I'll save a deep, a more deeper dissection of the rest of the book for like a longer, more structured video that I might, that I probably will make soon. He's right in, in like a fair bit of his assessment of like BreadTube as a whole. Where he goes wrong is like claiming that it's, it's some sort of conspiracy or that, that like he's vastly overstating its importance. Like, yeah, BreadTube is full of fucking liberals, but for Caleb Morpin, because he's argued with some of these liberals on Twitter, they must be a CIA psyop 
So somehow, like, the, in the rest of the book, somehow he starts talking about, like, Marxist theory and stuff and, and anarchism. And honestly, this is, there's no fucking way this is worth reading. Like, what does any of this have to do? The Marxist definition of socialism? Dude! Like, none of these people I even identify as socialists or even talk about it very much. How on earth does this have to do with anything? He quotes the Richard Wolff Destiny Debate. So as I said, like, Caleb Maupin is correct in a lot of his assessments on the beliefs of, like, people like Vosch, right? Like, for example, he says here, Brett Tube's insistence that socialism is merely a worker cooperative scheme reveals further the thesis of this book. That Brett Tube is- oh no, this- okay. Okay. The first- the first part of this sentence is correct. Brett Tube's insistence that socialism is merely a worker cooperative scheme. Okay? Yes, they are wrong. They are wrong to say that. The next part of this sentence, though, this is where we get to the fucking insanity. Reveals further the thesis of the book that Breadtube is the creation of the more powerful globalist wing of the ruling class in its efforts to beat back the rebellions of Trump and lower level capitalists. Ex fucking excuse me? Where in the holy fuck? Because some morons don't know what socialism is and advocate for a fake version of it to a fundamentally niche audience that doesn't matter in the slightest that's that's proof that that means that they are it's a it's a working class globalist psyop like he takes like okay he takes like what is basically him critiquing the views of people like destiny and Vosch, and somehow extends it to an entire like like his idea of like an entire psyop that exists to convince people that socialism is is the wrong thing and the funny thing is right I'll tell you right now, the weirdest fucking thing is, before that quote, he has an extended two-page long quote of Richard Wolff in the, in the debate against Destiny, defending um, the USSR, right? And then he, after that he says, Brett Tube's insistence that socialism is merely a worker cooperative scheme. Reveals further the thesis of this book that Brett Tube is largely the creation of a more powerful global swing of the ruling class. But Richard Wolff, Richard Wolff is a cooperative socialist. Richard Wolff, who you just fucking quoted. You just quoted glowingly. Is he, believes that too. What the fuck are you talking about? Or, or is, is Richard Wolff a part of this, a part of this scheme too? The guy who you just, who just fucking quoted, like at length, like I'll show you the quote, right? It's like, he quotes from Destiny's Debate. It starts, it starts here, okay? At the middle of the page. And it ends here. Okay, so two, two full pages of, of a quote of Richard Wolff from a Destiny debate. The pro-imperialist narrative, where communist revolutions only made life worse, is repeated by bred two voices. By who? I 100% guarantee you, even fucking Vosch would say that the USSR, the USSR made, made, um, made all of its, basically all of its territory better than it was before. He would, I guarantee you, he would say that about China. He would say that about Cuba, he would say that about Nicaragua, he would say that about Venezuela. Every single person would probably say that. It's, a, it's, a, it's an inarguable point. He's not that, he's not, Vosch isn't so dumb that he would argue against literal, the most obvious fucking thing in the entire world. He, he's equating them like saying, you know, China and Russia aren't anti-imperialist states. With this idea that like, um, like, 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 like that they deny the reality about economic achievements of socialist states in the past, which isn't, I don't think is true at all. Like, look, I'm giving Caleb a lot of, a lot of points here. It's only fair that I give Vosch one point too. Caleb is correct about like, Breadtube is wrong that uh, Breadtube is wrong that socialism is simply cooperative capitalism. Okay, where he gets batshit insane is taking that and then saying that this is evidence that Breadtube is is a is a creation of of, of the globalists. It's a it's a CIA globalist psyop. Like, is it so hard to believe that a bunch of liberals? who start making YouTube channels and get popular for, for political commentary would want to identify as socialist because it sounds cooler. And they try to do like mental gymnastics to make themselves like, you know, to like justify that, to like kind of frame themselves as socialists when they're not. Because, you know, it sounds cooler. It, it's, it's a lot simpler than um, Red Tube is a massive CIA psyop, you know? Right-wingers have long mocked the comment, that's not real socialism, which bread tube aligned voices frequently fall back on. Actually, that comment is, is most frequently used against people who, um, Stalinists, who think that the USSR became revisionist after Stalin. And they say that wasn't real communism about it. I mean, Caleb Morpin is not a Nazi, he's just a fucking moron. 
Like here, another time where Caleb Morpin is right. The overall weakness of BreadTube's analysis is the refusal to confront or discuss imperialism in an age where Western capitalism is imperialism. Well, for one, that last point is wrong, obviously. Obviously, Western capitalism isn't the only type of imperialism that exists in the world today. But he's right about the fact that BreadTube refuses to confront or discuss imperialism, especially Western imperialism. Okay? So that part is correct. Right? But then he takes this and tries to say that, um, like he's, he's, and then tries to say that it's like a CIA PSYOP. And he, he just like goes on about how, you know, the USSR had good economic stats, which is true. Basically, oh, he starts, he starts saying Gaddafi was great. You know, he's basically saying, he's going through like a laundry list of like the, of the names of people who, you, who, according to him, you have to say are really good. He's saying Assadism is good. Ba'athism is good. Nasser was good. Everyone was good. Um, Gaddafi was good. Um, Iran, Iran's current government is good. He says, to say that Marxist Leninist governments and anti imperialist states, for one, anti imperialist state, that's not a fucking thing, dude. Come on, that's just a thing that people made up on Twitter to, to like justify themselves for like their uncritical support of random countries that have nothing to do with Marxism. To say that Marxist Leninist governments and anti imperialist states have never accomplished anything or only made life worse is a sick joke that is completely contrary to all basic economic data. True. Also, a complete fucking straw man that you've constructed here. I don't think anyone, I don't even think socialism done left would say that. That's how, that's how, how bad this straw man is. Like, Destiny would say that, sure, but Destiny isn't like bread tube. In rare instances, bread tubers will even defend cuts in social spending and the erosion of the welfare state, arguing that we don't want socialism, that we don't want state socialism. I would like to see a single example of anyone ever using that argument. It is clear that BreadTube has created a, a brand of socialism that is, that is not very threatening to the status quo. True. Rather than calling for society to control the means of production, even a minimal cost struggle program like stopping cuts in social spending or opposing imperialist regime change wars... Okay, I guarantee BreadTube absolutely does. I, I'm, the BreadTube is we talked about, like Vorsch, H. Bomber guy. They absolutely do oppose cuts in social spending. Do they oppose imperialist regime change wars? Yeah, I think they do. They, they certainly exaggerate and, and hyper-focus on US. You know, when they talk about imperialism, it's generally to talk about Chinese imperialism rather than US imperialism, and that is a big problem. But to say that they want imperialist regime change wars, they don't oppose them, is obviously bullshit. BreadTube simply wants to experiment with profit sharing and employee stock ownership as imperialism and austerity are allowed to roll ahead. Now, I think the reason why BreadTube focuses on those things is because one, it's just easy. Like it's it's obviously a lot easier to imagine a society where you take what we have now, but give but give give the workers the stocks or whatever, right? And, you know, the reason why they focus so much on these sorts of these sorts of systems rather than talking about other countries, because they're all fucking Americans. This is what Americans do, okay? Americans don't care about the rest of the world. It's not to do with them being paid by the CIA. Not surprisingly, this deviation from everything Marxists and socialists have advocated for, for for hundreds of years has been enabled to go viral and speak in the place of genuine anti-capitalism. Again, for him, this is all a conspiracy. Oh, here we go. This is the part that's, that's specifically about him being, laughed, being called a Nazi. Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. Yeah, the entire book is him talking about Vosch. He's comparing, he's comparing BreadTube to the Proud Boys here. He says that they have the same beliefs that Western capitalist countries are superior. Why does he, like, it's really funny to me how, like, Caleb Morpin and his ilk have invented this categorization of an anti-imperialist country, right? He says anti-imperialist and socialist country. So apparently any country that is, that is ever targeted by the USA is anti-imperialist. It's just like a way to, like, to, like, you know, oh, so they're not socialist, but they're anti-imperialist somehow. I don't think they're against imperialism at all. I just think they're defending their own interests, and their own interests in the moment happen to be the fact that they're being fucked over by the USA. Not that they're ideologically anti-imperialist. Basically, every single page is just full of conspiracy, like him trying to like very loosely link like random historical facts and events to to BreadTube, and like saying, mm, "BreadTube sounds kind of like this, doesn't it? That must mean that BreadTube is a CIA psyop." Oh, he has an entire chapter here about about Contrapoints' video on fascism. Natalie Wynn gained mainstream appreciation for her video decrypting the alt-right how to recognize a fascist. 
He says, this particular video is almost comedic at points. So ContraPoint said in the beginning of her video, contemporary fascists hold free core beliefs. She lists them as a belief in the sacredness of the white race, the conspiracy theory that Jews seek to conduct white genocide or replacement, and the ultimate what goal of creating a white ethnostate in which non-whites and degenerates are purged. Maupin responds to this saying that, um, this is certainly an accurate description of what white nationalists believe. However, the right wing, especially in the age of the internet, is far more vast and ideologically diverse. Many far rightists are anarcho capitalists who advocate for unregulated free market capitalism. Okay? Many far rightists are anti Islamic bigots who do not believe Jews are a secret cabal, but rather see Israel as an outpost of civilization against the menace of Islam. It's not about them then. Her, her, her video is not about them then. So why do you list them as if, like, she's talking about these people? She's clearly not. It's about fascists, right? And she tells you that those free core beliefs are who she's talking about, right? Now, obviously, fascism is a lot broader than just those free core beliefs. She's talking more about, like, white nationalists, like, US-style contemporary fascism. But those people are fascists. They are one type of fascist, sure, but... She's not, she's not incorrect in, in labeling them as fascists. How is Morpin refuting her here by talking about other types of right-wingers? She obviously wasn't talking about that. I don't get it. Then he says, ContraPoint spends most of the video developing all kinds of loopholes through which individuals who have nothing in common with white nationalism can be linked to it. So if you want to recognize a fascist, you will have to know how to read dog whistles, blah, blah, blah. Because usually a fascist will, dis will, dis will disavow fascism, racism, and white supremacy, etc. Yeah, okay, that's true. However, ContraPoints' video basically argues that anything can be a dog whistle, anyone can be a fascist, and all that is necessary to prove it is something as meaningless as a hand gesture, a slip of the tongue, or a more importantly disagreement with the mainstream of the left. No, that, the video doesn't say that at all. She provides specific examples of... of like modern fascist dog whistles and like context in which they're, they're used that in which they might be a fascist dog whistle, right? According to ContraPoint, statements like I love my uh, country could be interpreted as coded fascist messaging. Not on their own, no. In, co in combination with other stuff, yes. Gestures like thumbs up or no one says thumbs up is it, or the okay sign. Yes, that sign absolutely can be considered a secret Nazi hand sign. He's, he's saying it can't be. The fucking Christchurch shooter flashes at the fucking camera on his trial, okay? Yeah, most of the time when it's used, it literally just means okay. Context matters, Caleb Morpin, you fucking dumbass. That's obviously what she was talking about, and she, I'm, I guarantee you she said this in her fucking video. This guy is just a total joke. Like, just making shit up. Across the internet, commentators like Jimmy Dore, Kim Iverson, and others who do not agree with US foreign policy are continue to be fascist and crypto-fascists. I mean, I don't think they're fascists or crypto fascists. I think they're fucking dumbasses. That's simple. Oh, here he goes. The proof is that they support anti-imperialist countries. Anti-imperialist countries is such a dumb fucking phrase, man. It just means any country that is, that is, a, is opposed to the US foreign, poli foreign policy line, basically. China, Syria, Venezuela, Russia. These countries have been declared fascist by US media. I don't think the US media talks about these countries in terms of fascism at all. He says that BreadTube is like McCarthyism. He's really m mischaracterizing ContraPoints' video and... Oh! He's talking about his own anti-Semitism. BreadTube routinely insists phrases like international bankers or Western civilization are fascist, fascist dog whistles. Yeah, they are. Yet Hillary Clinton's use of the term super predators is deemed to be merely an understandable mistake or error. Who thinks that? Who in BreadTube thinks that Super Predators wasn't a massive do racist dog whistle? Who the fuck is he talking about? Like, in this book, Caleb Morpin is like simultaneously creating a straw man of like a synthesis between like a generic fucking I'm with her liberal and like Vosh, right? And he, he, and, and he takes which, whichever opinion from either of those is convenient for him in the moment. ContraPoints' video has been utilized to destroy the lives of countless individuals. Like who? Does he think that ContraPoints is the only one who, who ever noticed that this was being used by white supremacists? No. This is, this is another thing, right? He's attributing people like noticing white supremacist dog whistles purely to one BreadTube video. Like he's, ex he's like in extremely deep into this idea that like fucking YouTube videos and social media are incredibly influential when they're just not, man. Like what we're engaged in is, a, is an incredibly small niche on social media. You know, ContraPoints is a relatively large YouTube channel, but 
she does not have anywhere near this kind of fucking influence, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're right. Earlier in the book, he did say that evidence that you shouldn't support the Hong Kong protests are that they had alt-right dog whistles. And now he's specifically saying that alt-right dog whistles do not exist, basically. So very weird. All of this is just about himself, right? I'm telling you right here. Like, he's, he's mischaracterizing his opponents as being against him because he likes China. And this is, this is the sentence. You can tell right here this is 100% about him. Of course, in the worldview extolled by much of BreadTube, if he dare disagree that the West is a, is a bastion of tolerance and freedom, while China, Russia, Syria, and Venezuela are evil fascist regimes, you must be a fascist yourself. Who cares if you are anti-racist or have spent over a decade working against racism? He's talking about himself. So the entire book is just about petty internet arguments that he had on Twitter and debates with Destiny and Vosh. It's so funny that Vo he's calling others conspiracy theorists here. Hilariously, wow, this is really funny. Hilariously, according to ContraPoints, she herself must be a fascist. Throughout her whole video, she wears a Nazi S costume, shows images highlighting the work of far right commentators, and shows various hand signs and images known to be coded fascist imagery. Are you serious? Do you think you just made a good point there? I am very confused. I don't understand how he can take that she, that, you know, she was wearing that sort of stuff and making those sorts of hand signs as examples. Or, you know, to parody them or to show people what they are, etc. And apparently that alone makes her a fascist, right? Not even in her own video did she say that. She was obviously providing, like, talking about how, you know, in context, in context, right? These things may, may indicate a fascist. And I'm sure she, I haven't watched the video in a long time, but I'm fucking sure she said that. The BreadTube community and its content are certainly loved by the YouTube algorithm. If you're favored by the YouTube algorithm, you would have far more fucking viewers than they do. Like if you're, if you're, you make videos in this sphere, half of your videos get demonetized. And most, most of your views generally come from your, your people who are already subscribed. Which means that your videos aren't really being discovered that much by new viewers, which means that they're not being served to many people by the algorithm. The characteristic of a channel which is favored by the algorithm is one in which more than 80% of the views come from unsubscribed people. There's no YouTube, there's no BreadTube channel where that is the case. Like he's framing ContraPoints' video as being black and white. Like if you do this, you're a fascist automatically. There's no room for nuance, there's no context. And he's running with that straw man for an entire fucking chapter. I'm not even going to read it, honestly. It's not worth considering. Ah, oh, here we go. Reader beware. In the aftermath of publication, buying, owning, or simply reading this book will be 100% confirmation to many bread tubers that you are a fascist. Well, I'm gonna own it. I'm not joking. He really says that here, down here. Ah, oh, man, it's really hard to get this on camera without it being overexposed and unreadable. He says, citing economic data is fascist. Citing, quoting classical, classical philosophers is fascist. I don't think anyone thinks that. Next chapter, understanding left pessimism. Okay. In between his videos on suicide ideation, self-harm, and childhood trauma, it seems that Kayla Morpin thinks that if you make like a couple of videos talking about mental health issues and personal, personal things that happen to you, that means that you are some sort of terrible pessimist and that's all you ever talk about. And then he quotes like a Fort Slime video at length. Um, this doesn't elaborate, just quotes it at length, no elaboration. The degrowth delusions? Excuse me? What does degrowth have to do with anything? The degrowth delusions. He's quoting um, Fort Slime saying, We the consumer, particularly those of us in the West, bear some responsibility in this. We buy shit we don't need and throw away shit other people could use. Now, Kayla Morpin is trying to refute this, apparently. He says, Like a neoliberal economist, Matt Fort Slime believes the delusion that somehow the system that leaves millions of people in poverty across the developing world and increasingly drives first world workers into greater poverty and lower living standards is not holding back human productivity. I mean... The problem with, with modern day capitalism is not low productivity at all. I don't, what is the point here? Does he think that the argument for socialism is that, is that we can make more stuff with socialism? Will, will we have more, more brands of, of iPhone? Excuse me? I don't think anyone's primary concern with socialism in the modern day should be based on praise be to a lot productivity. 
world doesn't need more productivity. But he's saying here that like, apparently the reason why socialism is good isn't because, isn't because it increases like the living standards of human beings and like solves issues with like alienation from one's work, etc. For For Caleb Morpin, Socialism is a better is a better um, mode of production because it makes more. I don't think that's that's at all. What is it? Is this, are you saying socialism done left argues for socialism by saying that it produces more? I don't believe that. It, it's like him and him and socialism done left being in agreement sounds very funny. While Matt accepts the premise that capitalism is capable of creating endless growth, Matt thinks this is bad. I mean, one, no, I, I don't think he believes that at all. But two, I mean, what, what does endless growth mean, right? Like, an endless increase in the living, set, the living standards of human beings. That is what I would think that we should aim for, right? Sure, why not? You know, we're always going to be inventing new technology, always going to be finding, you know, um, better and more efficient ways of managing our lives, you know, so, but I don't think that's what Morpin is talking about. I think he's talking about like growth in like growth for growth's sake, right? Like just the like endless, like endless growth for the sake of capitalist profiteering. That's what it sounds like to me. In a video, in their video championing degrowth, Fort Slime argues that humans have gone too far. The problem isn't that working people are increasingly impoverished due to capitalism's inherent creation of poverty among, among, among its plenty. I'm pretty sure that's exactly, exactly what Fort Slime thinks. The problem is that average working people have too much stuff. Oh, Morbin's problem here is that he doesn't like the fact that Americans are labor aristocrats. He's, he's saying his problem here, the average, he, like he's defending the American exploitation of third world workers. Straight up. As American workers are seeing their wages go down, their homes foreclose, and their children condemned to a life of student debt, the problem is that they are still too comfortable. Fort Slime anticipates an ecological collapse unless human consumption can urgently be reduced. Yeah, that's literally just fact. And then he starts talking about Malthus. I mean, you've seen this before. This is like a year ago shit, right? Does Caleb Morpin not believe in climate change? That's the only conclusion I can draw from this. He doesn't even mention, he doesn't even like... Like, obviously, Fort Slime anticipates an ecological apocalypse. Obviously, because of climate change. Everyone knows that, right? And, and the way that we avoid this ecological apocalypse is through changing our mode of production. Okay? But Caleb Morpin apparently doesn't even think that because he doesn't mention it. And then he just starts, like, he starts talking about, like, how apparently degrowth is the same as Malthusianism. It's not. There's nothing about degrowth that implies reducing standards of living at all. Just we just like essentially the, the idea is that we produce or capitalist the capitalist mode of production like produces tons tons of shit that no one fucking needs. Even if even if you just consider food waste, for example, there's 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 an example that no one even no one even consumes, not even just for pleasure. But he's dishonestly linking that to like Malthusianism and eugenic, eugenicism. Human history and progress must be ended so that they can remain permanently in their winning position. Um, honestly, what the fuck? The imperialist wars of the last 70 years have largely been degrowth operations. That's specifically the opposite of what they've been. They've been wars in order, in order to further exploit resources, in order to open up new markets to exploitation, in order to integrate people into the global competitive market order. Here's a, here's a funny sentence for you. Human progress has gone too far. Stop it. Scream the Wall Street ultra-rich from the boardrooms of J.P. Morgan Chase, ExxonMobil, and the Bank of America. Excuse me. Not only must the developing world remain poor, they proclaim, but living standards must also drop in the West. What? The... Morgan, Morgan, Stan, Morgan, J.P. Morgan Chase, ExxonMobil, and the Bank of America are apparently le leading the charge to stop, to stop economic growth worldwide. They, they don't want profits anymore. They don't want, you know, ExxonMobil doesn't want to, doesn't want to um, exploit any more oil. They want us to stop using fossil fuels. 
You see, the thing that he's doing here, this entire chapter, what he does, I'll describe it to you because obviously you can't really read it, but he has like one paragraph where he talks about like um, Fort Slime and how Fort Slime thinks that um, endless capitalist growth for profit is, is unsustainable, which is true. And also needless because it doesn't increase living standards for anyone. And then the next paragraph, he starts talking about like Malthus and overpopulation. Like clearly, like, Clearly he thinks that the link between these two things are self-evident when they're obviously not even remotely. But in his brain, this makes, it makes sense to link these things together without, without even trying to explain it. And the, the reader is supposed to also pick this up automatically. Okay, so here he says, okay, Caleb Morpin addresses climate change finally. The current fossil fuel economy is certainly unsustainable and creating a global crisis of climate change. But the solution is moving to a more efficient and sustainable energy source. The most promising hope of which is nuclear fusion. Literally everyone who you're apparently refuting here agrees with that. And now he's like saying, for this reason, China and Russia have called for international cooperation for fusion research. Okay, great. What the fuck? He's like saying like, aren't China and Russia great? And this other guy bad, because I just completely misrepresented everything that this other guy believes. The way that human beings interact with resources must change, no doubt about it. Great, Caleb, that's exactly what Fort Slime was saying. This is weird as fuck, man. And then he just starts like, like, quoting like random Marx and Engels quotes at length. God, this chapter is so long. Where's the part where he calls them CIA again? That's more fun. Sexual frustration! seems to be a big component of left pessimism as its most infamous recruit demonstrates something about margaret sanger man caleb morpin really doesn't like sex like unironically doesn't like sex he's trying to claim that he's he's trying to say that because margaret sanger was a eugenicist that anyone who is for sexual freedom is somehow linked to her this entire chapter uh, margaret sanger's departure from marxism Trading socialism for sex follows a common pattern of synthetic leftism. Apparently you can't be a Marxist and also agree with sexual liberation. Many deviations from scientific socialism appear intoxicated by a carnal undertone. He's one second away from calling anal sex a bourgeois deviation. Rather than seeking a healthy society of sustainable growth and human progress, the goal is a cathartic explosion of destruction and vengeance. He really does... He really does sound like... Uh, a Nazbol in this part, like, absolutely. He sounds like, um... You know, look, like... You're talking about how these sexual deviants are misleading us from economic progress. I guess you, you won't see... You won't see, um... More than talking about Marx and Engels wanting to abolish the family anytime soon. He seems to... He seems to love the family. God, there's just so many random quotes from utterly irrelevant shit in order to prove in order to prove in his mind that BreadTube is a part. Oh, here we go. Randomly talking about MK Ultra and the CIA for some reason. Okay. He talks about like um MK Ultra and the CIA in the very next sen sentence. The pessimism, sex obsession, and anti-growth politics of BreadTube clearly have deep roots. They are not the personal innovation of Vorsch. Fort Slime, ContraPoints, or any other shallow internet personality. But these are not the politics of the working class. What are the politics of the working class, Caleb Morpin? Is that they don't like slime? These are the politics of the ultra-rich. Apparently the ultra-rich want to stop their profits. They don't want growth. They, they love sex. And apparently the ultra-rich are also pessimistic. I don't understand. There's not a single citation in the entire book, by the way. The pessimistic politics represent the interests of those who already sit at the top of the world economy. Growth must, to them, growth must end because, growth must end because they are already on top. Buddy, they are the ones who advocate for infinite growth. They are the ones who don't want to do anything about climate change. They are the ones in charge of the fossil fuel companies. They are the ones manufacturing 10 times more food than we need to eat. What the fuck is wrong with you? For them, climate change can only mean that humans have gone too far and a mass reduction of the population and consumption is needed. No, these people want the opposite of that. The working class, however, like, Caleb Morpin thinks he's the fucking spokesman of the working class. The working class, however, in its desire to build and construct these Ben Shapiro vibes, 
solving problems by driving forward human progress, has a completely different worldview. Unlike the optimistic Marxists who lead China and the Bol Bolivarian countries, does he think that that fucking Maduro and, and Morales are, are Marxists? Breadtube does not serve the march of humanity toward freedom from the irrationality of greed. In its pessimism and destructive mindset, Breadtube serves imperialism. This is like, honestly, what kind of person can read this and even think that any of this follows or even links together well? So let's see the conclusion. Okay, he says, And who do they see as their enemy? The laboring nation. While they do not call out the Falun Gong, the Israel lobby, the Miami Cubans, or other foreign policy interest groups, they single out low-income white workers with the Confederate flag as their target. I'm pretty sure most bread tubers who actually cover this, right? Like th this is this is absolutely indefensible stuff. This is abs this is comical. This is power like just straight up a parody. Okay, if you are dumb enough to even remotely think that any of this is even remotely insightful rather than just the deranged ramblings of a lunatic who thinks that his um his social media beefs are way more important than they will ever be you are a um an a lunatic yourself i'm pretty sure people do call out the israel lobby miami cubans and falun gong definitely as well i mean i call out i've called out all of those just within the last month my my we all call Destiny Agosano all day. I don't know where, what this guy is talking about. He says, People's real grief with Middle America is not that they are racist. It is that they do not accept the degrowth presently being forced upon them. Excuse me? I don't think these people even know what, what the fuck you're talking about. They do not accept their kids dying from opioids and being locked in for-profit prisons, facing a lifetime of low wages. These people explicitly vote for all those things. They, they vote for the Republicans. They... they they follow Donald Trump, who does all of these things. This sounds exactly like his rant against slime. They do, the working class does not like slime. They do not accept the idea that there are working people who are merely evil, privileged Euro settlers who deserve to be poor as retribution. Oh, ha, ha. here we go, here we go. Taylor Morpin doesn't like being called a settler. They do not accept. They they do not accept the idea that they are that they the working people are merely evil, privileged Euro settlers who deserve to be poorer as retribution for historical and ongoing injustices. Caleb Morbin seems to think that Vorsch is a third worldist. And Fort Simon is a third worldist. Now, I'll say here, people in the first world are absolutely privileged settlers. No doubt, who benefit from imperialism. Absolutely, they do. That is a fact, okay? Doesn't mean that they're evil, okay? Doesn't mean that they should be made poorer, okay? It does mean that we need to figure out something about this world system where, you know, people don't have to be exploited in this way so that those people can endure this, can have the standard of living that they do. I honestly don't know how I can make a video on this book. I need to cover every single sentence. He says that BreadTube are a few lumpen content creators who are triggered by class struggle rhetoric and popular will who want to hold back all of humanity's dreams of a better future. The broad masses of Americans are full of anger and ripe for rebellion against the same forces from which China, Russia, Nicaragua, Cuba, Venezuela, Vietnam, Iran, Syria, and many other countries have already broken free. Ah, oh, he's basically, he's doing globalist sort of stuff here. Right, this is the right-wing globalist sort of conspiracy theory about framing like an anti-imperialist sort of way. The ultra-rich class of multinational oligarchs and their great reset would destroy the lives of the American proletariat and drive it down to third world conditions. If anything, it would privilege all Americans slightly more than it does now. I don't understand. Does he think that Americans derive no benefit from multinational capitalism? Look, if, if, if the world's resources were basically distributed equally, the living standards in those countries wouldn't change or would improve slightly, right? That alone proves Caleb Morpin wrong here, okay? It shows you that, you know, even though obviously very little of these resources in the first world go to the working class, they still do benefit from the, from the nature of imperialism. The ultra-rich class of ultra blah blah blah, drive, apparently the richer want to drive the lives, people's lives down to third world conditions and to facilitate the high-tech, low-wage economy that no longer deems their labor power to be valuable. 
<laughs> he said he said the phrase he said the phrase the only solution to the crisis facing u.s society is a government of action that will fight for working families he said the catchphrase yay that doesn't sound like socialism to me caleb it just sounds like you want a social democracy he's basically calling for um socialism with american characteristics and like this entire last chapter has nothing to do with bread to almost nothing that just mentioned a couple of times very weird. Like, how is he even talking about this? Like, he ends, he ends, like, he basically ends the book, like, just saying, ah, oh, we need socialism with American characteristics. We need to awaken the American proletariat. You know, for a guy who claims to be an anti-imperialist, this guy is a massive American exceptionalist. Massively, massively hyper-focused on the USA. Um, he's basically, like, the, the, there's an appendix where he lists his four-point program, a mass mobilization to rebuild the country, that sounds like the Green New Deal to me. Wow! He's straight up calling for a technocracy. For a neoliberal style technocracy. A brain trust of the smartest minds must be assembled to lay out a detailed five-year economic plan. And the public must be mobilized to carry it out with the full support of the country's resources. Caleb Morpin doesn't seem to be a fan of democracy if you're asking me. So he basically calls for something like the Green New Deal, you know, like a massive plan of infrastructure development, giving people jobs in the prices, etc., etc. Then he says that we, this, this must be planned by like a technocratic council who will tell everyone else what to do. Um, public ownership of natural resources. So nationalization of resources in the USA. Public control of banking. Um, money lending should be abolished, blah, blah, blah. An economic bill of rights. So now um basically saying that we need we need, we need to implement um um FDR's economic bill of rights and that's it like a hodgepodge of ideas the first part i mean it it really sounds like Caleb Morpin basically wants to abolish democracy and have like um like um a a technocratic council implement what he thinks should be done i mean what he what he, obviously what he thinks should be done isn't bad but what he's describing here is basically like um first like a, a first world social democracy like with no, no mention here of ending imperialism or anything like that no mention here of how this will be sustained without the continued exploitation of the third world because you know Morpin thinks that the exploitation of the third world doesn't do anything he thinks it doesn't benefit the USA the US has embraced insane libertarian neoliberal economics I've already I've already told you how that's not true libertarian neoliberal are not the same thing the public is viewed by the ruling elite as an obnoxious whore to be controlled and managed. Says the guy who just called for us to form a, an, an elite council of, of, of brain geniuses to control society. The danger of a new world order hangs over the USA. We, the Center for Political Innovation, reject this vision for degrowth, a 21st century dark age. Human creativity must be unleashed to build a better future. Oh, so... Um, Caleb Morpin is explicitly an American colonialist, right? He, he, he rejects decolonization right here. America was founded on slavery and the genocide of indigenous people, but the legacy of ugly wars and racism are not the only side of this country. Within U.S. history, there are many positive things like abolitionists, suffragettes, suffragettes, labor unionists, etc. And they, and they are just as, as much of a part of America's history as the warmongers and the monopolists. This progressive side of the American people must be awakened in order to reconquer political power and drive out the war makers and bankers. Nothing there to do with decolonization, right? He just gives like a token mention to indigenous genocide and slavery. Apparently, the way that we remedy this is just to take the U.S. state as it is and, and turn it into a social democracy. Then he just ends, he ends the whole book on his catchphrase. We need a government of action to fight for working families. Oh, there's, there's multiple appendixes. Caleb, like, wrote, like, a biography of himself in the appendixes. Don't care. Just like, oh, wow, this guy sucks his own dick, doesn't he? Basically, just like a bunch, like, Caleb Morpin has real, really huge delusions of grandeur. Millions of American working people are suffering and ready to fight back. Millions of lung, like, his entire book is focused on Americans, 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 Americans. This guy considers himself an anti-imperialist, but he is clearly a gigantic American exceptionalist. Who, who doesn't think that the U.S.'s exploitation of the rest of the world is a problem. He just thinks it needs to be distributed differently. Millions of young Americans are getting interested in socialism and need direction other than bread tubes, razzle-dazzle, and disinformation. I can tell you right now, millions of like young Americans are not getting interested in socialism. 
and even less of them even know what BreadTube is. Many are asking, what can I do to change the course of history? What, how can I choose life that matters? My vision for the Center of Political Innovation is a mass socialist educational think tank that will rescue socialism from the pessimistic distortions of the synthetic left and get to the masses. Apparently that means if you, if you, if you advocate for the USA to become a social democracy, that's all that we need. Ah, 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 this guy, this guy just, honestly, we need to check if Caleb Morpin has, has his last rib because we, get a load of this. Many young Americans are ready to take up history's challenge and I clearly have a role to play in working with them to facilitate America's transition to a much more healthy and rational society. I personally, Caleb Morpin, clearly have a role to play in working with them to facilitate America's transition to a much more healthy and rational society. Only the USA, nothing about the rest of the world from this supposed anti-imperialist. All that we need to do is make it so that Americans have a better standard of living. And Kayla Morpin is the one, the specific guy, who has a role to play in making this happen. This guy. I'm not making it up. Screenshot. Screenshot that. Unfucking real. Absolutely. Unreal. That's exactly what I'm talking about. This book is a product of someone with massive delusions of grandeur. Like, he's, he, the entire basis of his bread tube as a CIA op thing was based on an unknown source telling him that some random guy that most of us have never heard of apparently advises bread tubers. And then he just ran with that for the entire rest of the book and says that bread tube is a, um, a, a CIA psyop. I'm going to address this book in like a more in-depth structural way, like structured way, after I finish my next video. But honestly, I'm not going to have much more of a thesis for you than Caleb Morpin has delusions of grandeur. Though I do think it is a, it is a good example of how a lot of people on the internet really massively just get get caught up in this idea that they're doing something important when they're really not.